Teja Meru, welcome to CNN News 18. Thank you, Vishal. Nice to connect with you. Thank you, sir. Teja, you are the chairman of the task force for the music and arts for the government of Nagaland and lead the music and art mission. You're the person responsible for one of the biggest music festival of India called the Hornbill Music Festival that is underway in Nagaland in the towns of Kohima and Kisiyama. Yes, absolutely it's a, right. It's a 10 day long festival that really brings an exciting array of artists, musicians and bands to perform. So Correct. start with, please tell us more about the festival and this year's lineup. Uh, this year we have a huge lineup. Uh, you know, one very exciting thing about this year is that we have three uh, partnering countries, Germany, Colombia, and America. And all the embassies have, they have sent in their bands. Last night, we, we had the pleasure of witnessing the German band called the Elm Tree Circle. Very modern music, and it was, the crowd just loved it. And uh, the Americans will be reaching by the 7th or 8th, so we are looking forward to that. And tonight, the second day of the music festival, we have Colombia joined with some of our artists from Nagaland. Uh, so it's very exciting. And uh, uh, so this country partnership is really an exciting development to the festival. And I can uh, I can only uh, imagine it will grow just bigger with more countries coming in and more top participation from across the world. That is the plan and vision has always been. And now we are starting to see that come into reality. So then can please correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it that these concerts are free for everyone? <laughs> who visits the Heritage Village, Naga Heritage Village. Yes, as you're aware that the Hornbill Festival at large, or uh, in, all, in every sense of the word, is a, uh, is a tourism project. It's a flagship project of the government of Nagaland and headed by the tourism department of Nagaland. So for all our tourists that come from all over the world and many from across the country, this is a gesture that the government extends to say, in the morning, you, you see the culture of all the 17 tribes. In the evening, you come back at 5 o'clock till about 8, 9 to basically party and enjoy your life. And so uh, we have uh, about 40 plus bands this year. That includes a lot of them from Nagaland and across the country. So it's very exciting. So then please, uh, before moving on, can you please tell us maybe briefly about how it all started, the journey of Hornbill uh, Music Festival. It of course started in the year 2000. Yes. Uh, it started in the year 2000 as uh, uh, it wasn't a very big festival and thankfully I was also part of the first Hornbill Festival. I was then, then an MC, MCing for the night concert. So, uh, and it was not in this venue. This venue came in later. So it started as a basically, uh, you know, cultural showcasing and bringing together of our local cuisines, uh, products, and also a cultural display and showcasing. So. It started as a concept like that, and today it's become an international brand, and it's one of the biggest intellectual properties of Nagaland. I can rightly and safely say that. You know, last year, over one and a half lakh music lovers visited the festival. Do you think in the social media world, this number is going to increase in future? No, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, see, uh, that was in person. Last year, we did a calculation. We had about more than... Uh, 10 million traction our social media reach. And this year, I'm sure it's going to be more. The, the, the opening ceremony, the first day has been just going crazy on Instagram and it's all over. And I'm so happy that the country is logging in to celebrate with us. And hopefully, uh, but I would say digitally something and coming in, you know, being with the people, uh, eating our food, sitting with us, uh, inhaling our, you know, being in our kitchens, in our more rooms. I think it's a totally different experience and one needs to experience that. And I invite all my friends uh, whom I know or may not even know from across the country, friends like you I'm meeting for the first time, to please do visit us. It's a oh, great experience. Yeah. Looking forward. But you know, like you said, they are banned from Germany, America, and from, our, from over 80 countries who have been performing at the Hornbill Music Festival. Can you please talk to us about the culture and love for rock music that I think find many lovers in Nagaland? Yeah, rock is a very dominant sort of a genre uh, that, you know, that a lot of our local people like. Uh, but we also we are trying to really create uh, as, a, as a concept uh, from 2019, 
we are trying to also, yes, we have the rock, but we want to curate such a way that there's something for everybody that comes from a kid to, a, to a, somebody who loves Hindi. So we, you'll be very happy to know we have a lot of uh, also some of our uh, singers will be singing in Hindi this year. Yeah. So uh, the, the, they're primarily from the wing music. They've been supported by the wing music. So we are very grateful to Wing Studio for supporting them because we have a lot of uh, friends who come from the other states of India yes. and they're more comfortable with Hindi and they want to just you know, dance to the tune. So we felt that we need to really create, curate something that has everybody in mind, not just uh, our people in Nagaland who loves rock and roll. <laughs> Even though, yes, we, we love it, but we are trying to really sort of spread it out a bit so in terms singers, of genre. Which Hindi singers, which singers will be singing in Hindi? Ananya Parla? Uh, Ananya, I think she does both English and Hindi, if I'm not mistaken, but she's also primarily known as one of the biggest uh, uh, English selling sort of yes. artists. Yes. Uh, there's one Anushka, uh, there's uh, Adil Manuel in the band, Adil Manuel Project, okay. uh, no, Adil Manuel Collective. Okay. So I, they do both Hindi and uh, English, I, I'm told. So there are a lot of new names that uh, are coming in this year and hopefully uh, we want to promote more new names and you know one of the vision of the hornbill music festival is to really give that space to our indian artists yeah that's why we are very uh, careful not to bring in uh, you know too many from the other parts of the world even yeah. though we would love to we want our indian bands to get that preference to get that big stage because at the end of the day uh, people who visit the hornbill are maximum from our country all yeah. parts of the world so when they see someone like them i think it just connects better so that you know, a lot of things are getting to the curation. We are changing the concepts a bit uh, by by the year, depending on what is popular, uh, what is doing well with the crowd. Uh, because I think that's a as a festival, we need to evolve, continue to reimagine, and continually grow. Now, staying with Nagaland, I want to talk to you about uh, this place called Moko Chang, which is also known as the Living Museum of English Music. Can you please talk to us about it? It's really one of the, you know, hot hubs for rock music, metal, and that, that has really produced some of our best musicians. And they were really early in the game in terms of, you know, love for music, picking it up, picking up the guitar, a drum. So a lot of our uh, senior bands have emerged from Mokokchung. Either that or they moved to other cities and continue to emerge. And so they've really been pioneers and leaders uh, in, this, uh, in this field of music. Uh, today, a lot of other districts are picking it up, and uh, uh, but yes, you are very right. It is the rock capital of, I can truly say, it's the rock capital of Nagaland, sure. and they they love their rock and uh, and a lot of bands from Mokokchung are also been invited to perform at the big stage. Uh, in this on this note, we shall let me just say the squadron, one of the one of our longest existing rock band. Uh, that they, they, they've hit about 35 years now as a band together, they'll be performing here at this hornbill. So, we are very excited, very cool. But also, do you think uh, the choir culture in the northeast also played a big role because of the large Christian population? It also like a kind of way of life for people singing uh, like choir groups, absolutely. Uh, see, as a even myself, a singer, a uh, musician. Our first introduction to music were choirs and church music, and because of the you know dominant culture of church and and uh, church music, hymn singing, we are introduced to music very very early. And when you say hymns, you cannot do without the choirs. So yes, uh, we are really uh, you know, if there are a thousand churches, there'll be a thousand choirs. Okay. And just imagine every Sunday, how many churches sing hymns. Yeah. So it's uh, in, in that terms, it's really crazy and it's beautiful. Also, you know, staying with the rock music, do you think, correct to say that you'd always find the hardcore fans of rock metal? I mean, like the number may not be large as other genres, but, th but those who listen to it always come and unite for the gigs like real hardcore fans. That is absolutely right. If you tell me, I also am an absolutely hardcore fan. But now somebody who leads this industry, uh, this mission in Nagaland, I'm aware that... Uh, I have children who are growing up and I have to consider their taste of music uh, so that the music festival continues to evolve. Otherwise, it'll be like a product that one day people don't want to buy anymore. 
So I'm very aware of that as somebody who's in this field. So I continually study music trends from across the world, what's working, what's happening. So rock will always be there. Rock is king. Yeah. Uh, but we have to consider those are in their you know, early teens and you know, uh, so all those are, all, and there's the festival in particular. Uh, we, we bring in a lot of those considerations. So we are, we are, we are really focusing on, on even like hip hop, uh, like Hindi, like you said, there's a lot of our tourists that come out from other parts of the country. So there, it has to be a mixed bag. That's what we have, we have come to understand that it can't be just rock or, or just pop. You know, 10 days of rock or 10 days of pop might also not suit everybody. So we are bringing in everything and mixed bag, but highly curated uh, sort of a, a concert so that it, it also not just entertains, but also there's quality and excellence to it. So over 10 days, that's, that's what we do. Staying with the music, you know, the culture of music festivals uh, is thriving, especially in Northeast. Few Absolutely. people go, Farhan Akhtar perform at, at a festival, zero. at Zero Music Festival. Do you see more musicians from India coming now forward and wants to perform at the mm -hmm. Hornbell Music Festival? And how are you planning to accommodate this rising demand? Oh, uh, well, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Uh, definitely starting this year, we are getting in a lot of bands from other parts of our India, you said, uh, as I said earlier. Like, for example, uh, you know, we are very happy that Ananya Birla is going to come to perform. And we are very excited. She's a big artist. And, and uh, apart from the wing music, is sending four artists. So I think accommodating artists from across the country is not going to be a problem. We have big hearts. Our houses might be small. But we have big hearts and big arms, and our stage is big. So I think so that uh, that that is never going to be a hurdle. In fact, we want to see more bands from across the country uh, in parallel with also the foreign bands that are coming in from with through the support of the embassies. You know, the other highlight of this year's lineup is that you have twelve female-fronted or led bands who yes. will be performing at this year's Hornbill Music Festival. Is this in a way an attempt by you or by the Hornbill music community to be inclusive? No, absolutely. And sometimes, you know, as the festival director, uh, you, you can, you know, you can really sort of, because uh, maybe you're too engaged and busy, that sometimes you miss this, these very important points. And last year, in fact, the, the, the director of the British Council, uh, in an interview with the Rolling Stone, he had commented that he said, I went to the Hornbill Festival, it was great, but I didn't see any female fronted or very few. So I took that statement very seriously. I said, this year, very consciously, we're going to get a female artist in. So uh, out of the 40 bands uh, that have been invited, uh, we have 12 front women fronted bands. So I think it's a huge jump. Uh, and and hope we'll, we'll see them more and more in the, in the days to come because our female are doing great. And they need to be given this big space uh, at the Hornbill yeah. Music Festival. So, can you please talk to us about the concept of concert tourism? Like we have seen Taylor Swift era tour on billions in ticket sales. Do you see such a massive concert economy growing here in India as well? I think if you were to ask me that, I think it's already started to grow. We are seeing it. You know, big. For example, Lola Palooza yeah. has started the festival here. So, if they're not making money, they won't come for the second year. So I think India is a big market and the future looks only bright. With a, with a billion plus population, uh, 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 more than 50% of our country's young people uh, and also with a you know, rising economy of our middle class, they're going to have a lot of spending power for this sort of uh, concerts and entertainment. So it's a great, great time to be an Indian, a great time to be in India as a musician. You know, I have to mention uh, about the culture of music uh, in Northeast was really reflected very nicely in the film 99 song that was produced and written by ARMR. Yes. He of course, collaborated with, uh, with his Sunshine Orchestra. How was the whole experience like for, of this association with Rehman, sir? It has been an absolute uh, incredible journey with him. Uh, he is so humble and uh, he just has great love for Northeast. And we are so happy that he came to be the guest of honor at the closing ceremony of the 2019 Hornbill Festival. Uh, before getting into the sunshine, you know, Vishal will be very happy to know that after he went back, he has commissioned a film 
on Nagaland music, and I'm sure he'll be announcing very soon. It has taken about three years to make, uh, but uh, the, the, he just wants to, he feels after his visit that the world needs to know uh, what is happening in Nagaland as far as music is concerned. So the film is going to be released very soon. The, when the trailer is out, I will let you know. Uh, he has big plans with that. Now coming to the Sunshine Orchestra, it was uh, it's under the A.R. Rahman uh, uh, A.R. Rahman Foundation. So uh, actually, it started about way before 2019. I had met one friend of A.R. Rahman who visited yeah. Nagaland, and she had sort of sowed the seed of this Sunshine Orchestra. So when I took the chair, as the chair of Tafma, I said, "This is the first thing I want to do." So in the first year itself. Uh, three months into my appointment, I had requested through this friend of A.R. Rahman, please help me meet, sir, and we would love to have the Sajan Orchestra. So he was very kind to meet me. I met him in Chennai, and we discussed this. He was very excited. And today, the, the children are really doing well. Of course, violin is a difficult instrument, so they have not gotten the big, big stage yet, uh, but give them another two, three years, they should be somewhere. So we are very grateful to Dr. A.R. Rahman for his continued patronage. Uh, we are in constant touch with him. Uh, he has been guiding us and guiding our music industry. And we are very grateful to him. Okay. And finally, you know, next year, it will be, it will be 25 years to yes. Hornbill Music Festival. How are you planning to celebrate this Silver Jubilee of Hornbill Music Festival next year? Well, as of now, I cannot really say uh, uh, too much because uh, Hornbill is headed by the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland himself. So I think right after this hornbill is over, I'm sure many meetings will be called uh, and then he would give us the direction. So we're just waiting for that and, and, and very excited about next year. And uh, you know, we pray for good health, long life so that we see this and make something uh, a big one, a grand one. And hoping to see you at Hornbill 25. Oh, sure, thank Michelle. you. <laughs> well, on that happy and musical note, I want to say more power to you. Thank you so much for bringing so much music for, in our life. Thank Looking you. Looking forward to lots more. Hoping that you'll have a great festival this year and the years to come. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for talking to us. And best of Thank you. Thank and you. namaste. namaste. Thank you. Thank you.